for this last teaching of the of the year, the Western year, and uh, to set right also our mind just before the beginning of the festivity, which are coming with Christmas and all. Uh, we will see a text. I don't know if we will see the, the, the all of it today, as a matter of fact, because it's a little bit long, uh, which uh, is uh, from the second Dalai Lama, Gyalwa Gendun Gyatso. Uh, the name of the, of the text itself is uh, View Activity Meditation. So as we do usually with uh, a text, uh, I uh, will uh, read one or two paragraphs and then we can uh, see its meaning. So the first uh, paragraph uh, goes as follow. To the feet of my holy teacher, constantly I bow down, and I bow to the feet of the great master, Lama Tsongkhapa, the thought of whom destroys the terrors of samsara, and in a single moment bestow all needs, ultimate and mundane. As we know, uh, within the Vajrayana path, the guide, the root guru, the gurus are very important because they are those who bring us the Dharma. And uh, a great uh, deal of importance is placed uh, upon um, finding, I mean, checking, finding, connecting with a Lama and uh, requesting the guidance. And of course, the faith that we will um, develop later on. That's why the text uh, actually starts by bowing down to the feet of um, the holy teacher and to the feet of the great master, uh, Lama Tsongkhapa. It also uh, reminds us the importance of uh, prostration. Uh, sometime in the especially in the west we wonder a little bit why we need to prostrate uh, in front of uh, a lama or before teachings or before initiations the, prost the prostration has nothing to do with uh, worshiping blindly or blind faith it is a practice in itself which connects us with uh, all the buddhas and bodhisattvas when uh, you prostrate in front of uh, uh, a teacher, a master, um, you prostrate also in front of the refuge tree uh, with uh, all the lineage uh, gurus, the Buddha, uh, and the Bodhisattvas. Then you ask for their blessing under the form of light, which will come to uh, purify your uh, body, speech, and mind. And uh, then you uh, engage into the prayer to take refuge and to generate uh, the most uh, precious uh, motivation of bodhicitta. We should always also remind ourselves the reason for which we are listening to the teaching and the reason for which we are applying uh, the teaching and uh, engaging into various practices. It is because we are um, aiming at uh, developing our wisdom and um, skills in order to help as many beings as possible. In order to progress towards and reach enlightenment, we need to accumulate uh, to... Um, collection Yes, to, to complete two collections, which are the collection of merits and of wisdom. So the, the collection of uh, merits is uh, performed by uh, practicing the six uh, perfections and on the base of uh, um, the mind for awakening of bodhicitta. The accumulation of wisdom is uh, done by uh, meditating uh, deeper and deeper again and again on the true nature of uh, phenomena. Uh, phenomena as, uh, as a perception and phenomena also as uh, the perception of uh, ourself. Once we have um, 
established our master disciple relationship once we have engaged into the dharma deeply this is when referring to the texts we reach the point where uh, all the fears of samsara are removed it is said already that when we take refuge we are closing the doors of uh, the lower rebirth then when we are engaged on the Mahayana, on the Vajrayana path and uh, practitioner uh, following the correct advice, we are not afraid anymore by the samsara um, because we start to understand its nature. The next um, the paragraph goes as follow. The view which understands things as they really are, the deepest mode of being, is a meditative experience divorced from mental dullness and agitation. In action, it perfectly unites wisdom with method, and it spontaneously produces the fruit of Buddhahood's three perfect bodies. So that second paragraph is already, I would say, touching the, the core of the teaching of the Buddha, which is uh, connected with the true nature of uh, our reality. It does refer to how our reality does exist, how we perceive it, uh, how we consider it. It reminds us at the same time that the cornerstone of our practice, of our practices, is meditation. If we cannot pacify our mind and bring it to um, a very well concentrated state, then a lot of subject will remain out of our reach, out of our possibility of understanding. Only once our mind has reached that state, which is away from mental dullness and agitation, which are the two obstacles of meditation, then we can apply it, we can place it on some important topics. If we are starting to meditate on some great subjects such as compassion or the awakening mind or um, the causality, the karma, or the nature of reality, emptiness, uh, it is not uh, possible to enter into them with a mind which is jumping from thoughts to thoughts. There is, therefore, the absolute necessity to pacify our mind, uh, calm down our thoughts and learn how to concentrate properly. Without the capacity to focus, concentrate our minds on one object or on one topic, it is very difficult to progress. The text itself refers uh, to, at the same time, causality and um, the deepest nature of uh, our reality. Once we have the correct view, which is the view understanding the non-inherent existence of all phenomena, then we can really render our methods, our practice, meaningful uh, through wisdom. And once we have deepened that uh, correct view, uh, it leads us um, without mistake towards uh, complete enlightenment. The third paragraph goes as follow. As for the object of the view, it is uh, not made artificially by conditions. In essence, it is unchanging. By nature, it is pure. It is beyond concept of good and evil. It is all pervading the ultimate nature of everything and is the quintessence of the essence. And understanding it, one passes beyond the bound of entanglement. So we understand that uh, this uh, correct view is uh, the ultimate 
antidote to all our mistaken perceptions, to all our mistaken views. And it refers to the true nature of all phenomena. Whatever perception we have of uh, our reality, it is um, on the basis of the causality, on the basis of causes. And death does not have any self-inherent existence. This is definitely one of the most complicated concepts uh, that can exist because since beginning last time, we are functioning in a completely different way. We are functioning in a way that considers every phenomena, every perception that we have, as if it would exist from its own side. As soon as our eyes are connecting with uh, eye objects, a form, a color, as soon as we are hearing something, uh, we project it as to be an external, self-inherently existing phenomenon. And this is actually what we call the fundamental ignorance. When we are talking about ignorance, it is not about some things that we do not know, but it is about a wrong understanding of how the reality works. Our mind is extremely narrowed down, entangled by all the wrong conceptions that um, are bothering or bugging our mind. Whenever we are believing that there are external phenomena, there are objects which could exist from their own side, we are feeding the law of causality. We are creating bounds to uh, be born again and again. All our suffering, all our delusion uh, are coming from this fundamental ignorance. And the correct antidote to this ignorance which poison our minds is the realization that all phenomena are void of this uh, inherent existence. And it is not something that we can acquire, definitely not something we can buy, but not something that we can get uh, anew or that we could create. This is something already all pervading. When we are talking about the true nature of the reality, that nature is of course everywhere already which often brings me to to say and to think that we don't need to learn much more in order to realize this uh, nature of reality but we need to unlearn a lot of false concepts so the practice the meditation which can lead us to this realization is the essence of Dharma, the quintessence of Dharma. Going through such realization will free our mind, will free us from any conditioned rebirth in the future and um, lead us towards complete enlightenment. The next paragraph says, this world we see is a painting born from the brush of discursive thoughts and within or upon it nothing truly existent can be found all things in samsara and nirvana are but mental la uh, label and projections knowing this one knows reality seeing this one sees most true many times we tend to think that um, the law of causality the karma is just about how 
events are taking place, how we are meeting with the situations or people. But the correct understanding of the law of karma brings us far beyond up to understanding how we perceive every single phenomena. And when we say every phenomena, it means everything that we perceive, that we perceive with our six senses, five physical and one mental sense. Every single time we enter in contact with a phenomena, we tend to think that we contact something external while it is rising from our own mind. It is arising from our own mind, but because of our deluded uh, perceptions, deluded thoughts, we project it outside of ourselves. And this is our bigger, bigger mistake, our biggest uh, misconception. That is why such text as the one we are uh, going through uh, this evening and many others are extremely important uh, because they are at first challenging our, our usual way to perceive the reality. This is something we are not doing enough. We are uh, passing our days believing so strongly in an external reality and we are not enough challenging what we see asking ourselves where does it come from what is the nature of what i perceive as long as we do not have the correct perception the correct wisdom realized uh, the wisdom perceiving the true nature of phenomena we can start by telling ourselves that how I see things is not correct. Just as a first step to destabilize our so strongly grounded uh, presupposition upon what I perceive. But to think that uh, the way I perceive things is, is incorrect, even if we have not yet realized uh, the true nature, help us to understand um, or to destabilize our strongly based perception of everything. In the sense that when we see things automatically, immediately, we think that they are truly existing. We don't question them. Of course, they are. I see a wall, I see a cup, I see whatever. It exists as I think it exists, which is an external phenomenon. So from time to time, it is important, and as often as possible, to challenge our mind and say, well, it is not existing the way I perceive it. I don't fully understand yet how it does, but it is not as I see it. The text itself is extremely explicit. This world we see is a painting born from the brush of discursive thought. So because of our erroneous way of perceiving things, we perceive a, paint, a painting which we think is existing externally. If we take the, example, the usual example of the cup, look at the cup and spontaneously you would think well, that cup exists from its own side. It existed before I look at it and it will continue to exist once I will stop to look at it. But things are very different from that. At the same time, due to past accumulated causes and due to my mistaken perception, when my eyes are coming upon the cup, I see it as externally. While in reality, what I am perceiving is what I have created. All what I do perceive with my six senses is the result of what I have created, of the causes that I have created. The next um, 
paragraph says, <coughs> understand clearly the natures of both the limitless diversity and the one tastedness of things and makes this understanding firm as the very king of mountains. This is the key that opens the door of a hundred samadhis. Here we need to remind ourselves about what we call the two reality. We talk about the conventional reality and the ultimate reality. The ultimate reality of all phenomena is actually the absence of their inherent existence. And the conventional reality is what our um, disturbed or deluded mind is constantly perceiving. It is what we can perceive from within this uh, uh, conventional existence. A little bit in the same way that uh, we can talk about the dream reality, which is a type of reality we perceive while we are uh, dreaming. There are conventions, there are rules, there are um, illusions based on numerous causes we have uh, accumulated. But these two are said to be of the same taste, of the same nature. And normally we cannot perceive both or we cannot penetrate both at the same time. Even a bodhisattva, until quite far on the path, will either have a contemplation upon the true nature of reality or contemplation upon the conventional reality, but will not see both at the same time. And once we have uh, reached um, the accumulation of wisdom and merit, what is happening is we are uh, removing the last veil to ignorance and one's mind is able, becomes able to perceive both uh, sides of the coins at the same time. But of course we can say that much before to have reached uh, Buddhahood, once we have realized, actualized uh, the correct view upon the nature of reality, it uh, will uh, modify drastically our perception of the conventional reality. So once we make the, the understanding of the true nature of reality uh, very firm up to realizing it, then it says that it, uh, it uh, opens the door to an incredible perception. Next uh, paragraph says, uh, meditative focus which abides firmly and without motion and insight which reasons precisely to the underlying nature of all things. By combining this, the seeds of the two obscurations are forever abandoned. He who does just that is known as a great meditator. We cannot uh, focus enough or we cannot remind ourselves enough about the importance of a well-focused meditation. There are different types of meditation, of course, and nowadays we hear about meditation in, in many ways, but um, it is important to understand the right function and the right way to meditate in order to pacify our mind, to pacify our thoughts. Some people will talk about meditation while uh, listening music or while uh, painting or while uh, acting um, in a way or in another uh, without correctly understanding that a correct meditation is a single point focus away from any type of distraction and any type of dullness. So the meditation that we are talking about here is first to establish a motionless state of mind, which refers to uh, the realization of uh, Shinin meditation. 
once you have uh, developed this meditative state, then you place your mind on the topic of uh, the true nature of phenomena, uh, going very much in depth about uh, how all things are existing. And this is known as uh, the greatest type of meditation. So again and again, every single day that passes, it is of the utmost importance to meditate, pacify the mind, reach mental quietness, and on the basis of mental quietness to enter into the topic of emptiness, the result of which will be an incredible liberation of illusion. The next paragraph says, in essence, from the very beginning, no difference can be found between samsara and nirvana. Yet, good and evil actions invariably produce according results. The great way in action is the practice of the six perfections on the basis of this understanding. So from beginningless time, it is uh, clear that either we are talking about samsara or talking about nirvana, we are talking about uh, the same nature of existence. Uh, yet, as long as we are not freed uh, from the law of causality, all the phenomena that we believe into and the action that we are responding with are creating causes. That's why, as long as our mind is bound into the law of causality, uh, ethical values and compassion and the good heart, loving kindness, are extremely important because they are uh, creating the causes which are sustaining our existence. So the way our mind functions create causes that we will experience the result of in a later time. Understanding this, once we step on the Mahayana path, we also engage into the practice of the six perfections. The practice of the six perfections is uh, directly connected with the bodhisattva way of life, the way a bodhisattva uh, fulfill his life. So even and especially when we understand the true nature of all phenomena, it is important to engage ourselves in the development, the encouragement of goodness, of positive actions for the benefit of the others. And the last uh, paragraph says, the inseparability of emptiness and the manifest is the basis of the view. The path to be practiced is the twofold collection of goodness and wisdom. The result is the spontaneous birth of Buddhahood's two kayas. These are the views view, meditation, action, and attainment most pleasing to the enlightened ones. So when we decide to follow the path of the enlightened ones, um, we first define what is the correct view to have upon all phenomena. And the right view in this context is to understand that whatever is perceived, whatever is manifesting to our mind, uh, does not have any self-inherent existence. So we are talking about realizing the absence of any inherent existence of any phenomena that we are encountering, that we are entering in contact with. So every single phenomena, take the cup again, look at the cup, and uh, through the meditation, you can ask yourself, how could this cup really exist? How could it have any self-inherent existence? And you try to find out. Doing so again and again with a very well pacified mind, 
will bring us to the understanding that actually that cup does not have any way of existence besides the causes I have created for. So conventionally you see a cup, but ultimately you see the nature of that cup, which is emptiness. And you cannot differentiate both of them. They are uh, one in nature. Nothing is holding a self-inherent existence. If we would understand that in our daily life, uh, definitely a lot of mistake would be avoided. A lot of delusion and stress would be avoided. The path to be practiced is the path of the two accumulation that I mentioned a little bit earlier, the accumulation of merits done through the practice of the six perfections and the collection, uh, the accumulation of wisdom, which is um, through meditating on emptiness. Once we have achieved these two accumulation, uh, spontaneously, we can say, the um, the Dharmakaya form, I mean the Dharmakaya, uh, the Sambhogakaya and the Nirmanakaya uh, spontaneously arise. As the result of the wisdom and as the result of the wish to benefit all sentient beings. So it is not like if uh, a great uh, bodhisattva would uh, think either he wishes to uh, reach enlightenment, but out of his motivation to help all sentient beings in an unmistaken way, this, will, this result will uh, be uh, automatic. So this is our aim. Yes, when we are asking, uh, what do I aim in this life? What is my goal? in this life. As a Buddhist, our goal is to reach enlightenment, uh, complete Buddhahood for the sake of as many sentient beings as possible. And how do I reach Buddhahood? By completing the two accumulations. And how do I complete these two collections? Uh, by engaging into uh, the six uh, parameters and engaging into the proper meditation. The uh, proper meditation is developed on the basis of the pacification of the mind, the practice of shinne, and the correct understanding about the nature of all phenomena. Uh, the practice of the six paramita is uh, the result of generating bodhicitta, generating the uh, correct um, motivation which uh, wish to engage for the sake of all sentient beings. So, on a daily basis, which really means every single day, we need to remind ourselves of the true nature of phenomena uh, and the correct uh, motivation. Um, why do I insist on every single day? because of the way our mind works. If we really wish to transform our mind as quickly as possible, it is of the most importance to uh, focus that mind uh, repetitively on what must, matters the most. So not to let our mind simply to jump from thoughts to thoughts, concept to concept, uh, disturbed emotions to disturbed emotions, but to learn how to focus. Progressively to remove ourselves from uh, any negative thoughts, any uh, he, uh, ill way of thinking. And both compassion, bodhicitta and wisdom are helping us for that. Through the development of bodhicitta, we are learning how to generate loving kindness and the equanimity uh, towards all sentient beings. And by understanding that all what I perceive is a result of causes I have accumulated, 
we learn how to be less caught in the illusion of our perceptions. So this is a vast program. There is no doubt that it is a lifetime program. But without any mistake, we can say that if we do not start, we have no chance to reach. Thus, however we would think that this is a huge task to, uh, to perform, it is of our responsibility to engage all our means and all our energy to reach it. If we are on the Mahayana Vajrayana path, there is no other way. So with this uh, refreshment of our motivation and uh, correct understanding, I will um, close this teaching. Given uh, the fact that we are the 23rd of uh, December, I uh, will uh, wish uh, every and each of you a <coughs> pleasant uh, time uh, with all the, the feast and the good meals usually which are in this occasion. As we have been talking about the compassionate mind, I would uh, like to remind you that um, eating uh, the result of killing animals is not in the category of the best things to do, especially if it is you who organize and cook or buy uh, this uh, byproduct of uh, killing. So I would uh, encourage uh, those who are not yet vegetarian to take this way in order to respect the life of all sentient beings. Uh, when we talk about compassion and helping uh, all the sentient beings, it does not refer just to human beings, it does not refer to only our friends or closely related people, but all sentient beings from the sixth rhythm of rebirth. If uh, it would not uh, usually cross our mind to uh, kill and eat our parents, in the similar way, we should not uh, enjoy eating the flesh coming from the killing of some uh, sentient beings who in the chain of rebirth have been our parents. Most of the time we eat meat by attachment to the taste of it. This taste is a mere illusion and if for the satisfaction of our tongue we are able to be accomplice in the killing of animals, this is not the Mahayana way. This is not the Dharma way at all, actually. So if you have not yet thought about thoroughly and made the right decision, please do so. All right. Concluding prayers.